<sighs> Friends, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to think about how I want to approach this subject. Um, as you well know, I'm uh, completely unscripted. i just talk off the top of my head, for better or for worse. Hey, but first things first, happy Sunday morning to you, and uh, the best of Easter Sunday to, uh, to you and your, and your families, all right? So uh, a couple days ago, a friend of mine stopped by, and he had some books. He was cleaning out his library and um, just going through some stuff that he had from way back when he was in college. He's an excellent musician, by the way, excellent, superb, superb guitar player. Uh, but uh, he was going through some, some, uh, some, some teaching, some learning materials that he had that he, that he said that he had never, ever actually been able to master. And, um, and I want to show them to you without, without any criticism of the publisher. All right, this is not about criticizing uh, the, the publisher of these materials, but take a look. He, uh, he coughed up the 251 progression series. Um, and you know, the 251 is an important chord progression to know if you're learning jazz. Uh, he picked up this book called uh, The Turnaround Cycles in the Two Fives. He picked this book up and, uh, and uh, it, you know, it just, it just completely confused him. And then to add to the, the, the the trio of tough material, he picked up a, a book of John Coltrane, John Coltrane stuff. Again, this uh, is not meant to be a criticism of the publisher. I'm grateful that we have this stuff. When I was a little kid, a little fellow, we didn't have any material like this at all. What we had were our parents' records or whatever records that we could buy with our paper route money. And, um, and we would spend those um, or we would hear things uh, other instruments would teach us, you know, and we'd, we'd learn by ear. Uh, so so we, we didn't have uh, valuable learning materials uh, like this wonderful, wonderful book of John Coltrane solos. Your two five, uh, excuse me, your two five one progressions spelled out and, uh, and you know, what they are and, and, and turnarounds for two fives. These are, these are great books, but they're hard. This is hard stuff, all right? And, and it can be really, really, really difficult if you don't have the foundation that you need to understand. If you don't know, there are precursors, all right? You got to know stuff to be able to get into this material, okay? Um, I'm, I'm grateful that he gave them to me. These are, these are really good books, and I'll put them in the library. I have a library of books, and I'm sure that you do too. And I'm guessing that you, as well as everybody else that gets into an instrument, goes out to the music store with the idea of, of picking something up, and, and then you see something else, and then you see something else. And pretty soon, you know, you've, uh, you know, these are really reasonably priced books of knowledge, and you walk home with a handful of things, right? And at some point, they, they confuse you, right? There's something that, that's like just way, way over your head. So, so you go to the next book. And there, then there's something in there that's way over your head. So you go to the next book, you know. And before you know it, they end up on the shelf. And, uh, and they, uh, that's where they stay for years, right? You, you've got to know things before you get into, and you know, heavyweight materials like these. Now, some of those of you who are, you know, intermediate to advanced players, you got this. I understand that. But if you're trying to learn and you're on that learning curve and you're climbing the mountain toward the, you know, how to, how to figure out what a 2-5 does and, and why you should know it, where to put it, what to do with it, same with a 2 five, one, or Coltrane solos, because I don't know, for whatever you're looking for flexibility or whatever you want out of a, col a Coltrane uh, collection, you know, uh, these are great resources, but in the right progression. And that's a problem that we have with YouTube says the YouTube pro content provider here. Uh, YouTube allows you to, to study at home, and it's uh, kind of a moving target. You know, it's like, ooh, look over here, ooh, look over there, ooh, look over there. There have to be hundreds of people providing, uh, just let's just say saxophone content alone, right? And every day you subscribe, and every day, you know, there's a new one in your inbox, and you say, well, I, gotta, I, I better do that or I better do that, or I better do that, or I better do that, right? And there's no logical progression. And where I'm going with this is, 
you know, would you would you jump out of an airplane and land in the middle of the Amazon rainforest and hike around without a guide? Or would you even just say get off the boat? Or even just get on the boat and go down the Amazon without someone telling you where to go? Heck no, you wouldn't do that because, you know, first of all, the big snapper is going to come up and get you. Well, that's what happens. The big snapper is going to get you if you don't have the prerequisites or a guide to help you understand what this stuff is, not only what this stuff is and how to use it, all right, how to spot somebody using that material in their own solo, all right? Uh, when you listen, and I know you all listen, yes, of course you do, uh, to music, you want to be able to, like, pick this stuff out. That's a 2.5. Oh, that's a 2.5. Oh, that's a blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, hey, dude stole that from Coltrane. And it really, really helps if you've gone through all of the basics, right, the basics, and nailed them, and you have a teacher who says, okay, we're ready to move to the next level. Go buy this book. And you just buy one book, and you say, you know, I'm going to stay in this book for the next, I don't know, 90 days or a year or two years, however long it takes. It takes what it takes to learn stuff, all right? And it takes a village to raise a saxophonist, a saxophonist, all right? It takes a village. It takes a lot of people to help you out. You need practice buddies, but more important, you need that guide to help you go down the Amazon River and avoid the big snapper, all right? Now, I'm going to circle back to my friend because he's real depressed about this. He was, he was negative self-messages, giving himself all these kind of, you know, this, oh, all right, you know, I'm, I'm not going to. I said, you know, I'll put him on the shelf and save him for you. Oh, no, I, uh, I can't. I have to retire before I can get back into this stuff. And I hope I can retire young enough. It was just way over my head. And I was in college. And, oh, my God, I just, I could hear it. And I hear it in so many of you who are trying to learn this craft either from just watching videos uh, or buying these uh, self-help books and reading them by yourself. And I'm telling you, if, 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 if videos and self-help books and things, you know, scales and all that, if they work, there'd be a, you'd, you'd, all, you'd all be kicking ass right now, okay? Just think about that for a minute. You need this with a teacher, all right? You got to have a guide to the rainforest. I mean, there's just no other way to do this. Someone who can hit, and I mean, someone who's good at it. You got to find someone that's not like, well, I, you know, a classically, a classical saxophonist isn't going to know how to do this, right? You got to find somebody that knows how to do it. And the, the problem is, is that when you get this stuff and you get a backlog of this material and you saved a million YouTube, uh, you know, feeds and you haven't really mastered any one of them, you, you, you really end up feeling bad about yourself. All right. You, um, I watch a guy on YouTube, and his name is Casey Neistat. I think that's how you pronounce it. Casey Neistat. Funny looking guy, great videos. And there was one about always closing, always closing. And what that was, was the line from Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, you, you gotta always be closing. But what he took it to me was, you always gotta finish. You gotta finish what you start. And I, I tell them, you know, I see this in my students when they, when they take on stuff and they don't finish it. It goes on for like weeks and weeks and weeks, and they feel worse and worse and worse about themselves, okay? So if you take anything away from this, is that, you know, it's, it's not a criticism of this material. It's a criticism of how you use it, okay? How you're using it without a guide, and you're not finishing it. You're feeling bad about yourself. You're putting it away on the shelf, and you look at this stack of books every day, and you go, oh... Uh, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this stuff? Why can't I, why can't I pick this stuff up? Hey, baby, if jazz was easy, come on, like I said, you know. So um, give yourself credit, but finish what you start and make it a small bite. Not, not, not like a triple-decker burger here, okay? Pick one. Just pick one and work on it. When it gets hard, walk away, you know? Go get yourself a fruit smoothie, run a lap or two, do some sit-ups, I don't know, something. Come back to it later. Ask questions. Go to your community. Get a teacher. Yeah, teachers cost a lot of money, but they're worth it, all right? Mentor. Get a mentor. Whatever it takes. Sit down with your practice buddies and run this stuff. Sitting by yourself in a room, well, excuse me, but whoever bought one of these, Exhibit A, Your Honor, to sit in a room by themselves and run scales and things. You? No, of course not. So anyway, that's what I got. If you have any comments or any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If this was of any value to you, 
hit that subscribe button and that love button too while you're at it. Apparently it helps the YouTube powers that be help me help you. It's one big happy help loving. Okay, so I'm grateful for all of you. Our numbers continue to grow and uh, I've got some more ideas. Uh, I'm going to really not take Easter week, but I'm going to take, you know, a little time, a little extra time this week and crank out some of them and, and I'll, I'll post them as we go. And uh, got a new website, by the way. Thanks to those of you who uh, helped me out with comments. Uh, I will post a link to that. I'd love to hear your comments about the new website as well. Uh, that was really difficult for me. A um, little personal story. It's very hard for me to to relinquish control. I think maybe I'm a control freak. I don't know. Could be. But anyway, it was really hard to give. It took me a year. A year from the time I met the web developer to the time that we actually finished it and posted it. A year. About a year for me to feel comfortable getting help with so, with a project. So. I understand where you are. If, if you're the same way, get over it. Get some help with your horn. I don't care who it is, pr preferably somebody that you can sit with and play with, all right? Somebody you can hear and play with and just do that, okay? Happy Easter, y'all. Got to go. Excuse me. I've uh, been eating Easter goodies all morning, and that's never a good idea. <laughs> well, so, 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 so sue me, Easter, buddy. I'll catch up with you guys and girls Men and women of saxophone later, I appreciate all of you. Do good work. Keep in touch. DaveGoodSax at gmail.com if you have any, any comments or you have any questions or you want to just dive deeper into this subject. All right? DaveGoodSax at gmail.com. Take care.